Hello everyone, hope you guys are all doing well and welcome back to my channel. So today I have turned my camera around and I want to make this video a little bit more casual and less sort of set up as I usually do with my latest videos. In today's video I'm going to be talking about how to use Google Scholar in order to find some research journals or research papers or articles that you might be interested in using in your dissertations, your essays, or just for your general reading and background. As you might know, Google have loads of different extensions and Google Scholar is one of them. Essentially, it's a bibliographic database for mostly peer-reviewed articles. I say mostly because not every single article is peer-reviewed. A peer-reviewed article is an article that has been evaluated by a few other people aside from the author themselves. And what this does is determine the paper's suitability for publication. Um, and it's a nice kind of way to make sure that work is double-checked by someone else to make sure that there isn't any experiments or results that have been fabricated or twisted as is sometimes done in research. Peer reviewed journals and articles are definitely the ones that you should be reading and referencing when writing an essay. Google Scholar should be used just like Google, it's a normal search tool. So the key terms for the paper that you're looking for should be typed into the search bar as you would normally type in in Google. I'm going to be demonstrating how to use it over here on my laptop and I'll show you guys on a big screen. But you want to open Google Scholar. You then have two types of ways of searching. So you want to use the keywords uh, with end in it, or you can use the keywords with or in it. So for example, if you're looking for a paper that's talking about actin and myosin, which are two proteins, then you would write actin and myosin. If you want to find a paper that mentions actin or mentions myosin, then all you need to do is write down actin or myosin. So it's really important that you differentiate between what is it the inf what is the information that you want to find out. I want to find out about actin and myosin in combination, so I need to use actin and myosin. This search has come up with 577,000 results, so there are a load of results. Now, how do you sift through this in order to find the papers that are most relevant and most important to you? The first thing you can do, as I mentioned, to refine your results it is by using end or or. So um, at the top, if I want to refine it even more, I can write actin and myosin, I don't know, cell cortex. So I've got actin and myosin cell cortex. I have halved my results to 60,000 now. So I've got actin and myosin cell cortex. So those are the things that I'm looking for. So I've refined even more. So to really refine your results and to pick out the papers and the, the, the articles that you need, you do need to give as much keywords and as much detail as you can in the search bar. I now need to think about the dates that I'm interested in. I want to find out the information that is as recent as possible. So on the left hand side here, you can see there is a uh, timeline that you can decide from. I want to select since 2017 because that's quite recent I would say and again you can see 7,000 results and if I select since 2018 you have 3,000 results. This is really important especially when you, you're reading or you're writing an essay or a review or even a thesis or a dissertation it is important that you are writing about the latest research. There's no point of speaking about something that was proved or shown in 2006 and has recently been disproved. That shows that you haven't done an extensive search of the research that is out there. So it's really important that you do spend time looking at the, re the most recent work that you can and this is the way of doing it. In order to really refine and have the most comprehensive reading list and the most comprehensive bibliography, there is one more thing that you can do. One thing that becomes very apparent when you are finding papers and reading articles is that you can get lost in the kind of endless hole of research papers because there is, there is just an endless list of papers that are out there and that are relevant to your topic. And the one way that most of us do this is by looking at the cited uh, papers within a research paper. So for example, I'll open up this paper and I'll go to their reference list and I'll look at the papers that are in that reference list. Sometimes the papers that are in a reference list within a specific paper are firstly not necessarily that relevant and secondly the dates are usually an older paper. In order to do it the other way round and to find papers that have cited and referenced that paper that you're interested in, 
in order to do that you can click on this little thing over here that says cited by now that shows that there's another paper that is more recent to this one that has cited this paper so you're kind of working backwards essentially Actually, you're starting from one point and then you found papers that are related to that one through its reference list and then you've gone backwards and found papers that have referenced it so you come from each angle and i think it's such a great way and it's definitely something that i only discovered in the last year of my phd and i found it extremely useful i was able to find papers that i i don't know how i would have found otherwise and they were extremely extremely relevant now how many papers are enough are five papers enough are 10 papers enough 30 papers my phd had about 250 references is that enough you can saturate yourself conceptually you can it is a thing and i've read an article about it conceptual saturation is really something that can occur when you have read so much to the point where you are acquiring information from so many different sources and in fact it can be counterproductive so sometimes five papers is enough Sometimes 10 papers is enough. I would recommend reading less, but reading papers that are of more quality to you. Let's say do a search like what I've mentioned today and pick out the top 10 papers and focus on those and then move on and read some more. Definitely don't write yourself a list of 100 papers and try to tackle them because at the end of the day, that is not the most productive use of your time. I really hope this video helped. Don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up and also don't forget to leave me a comment and let me know what more you want to see from me this month. Don't forget to follow me on my socials which I'll leave over here and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!